Here is a quick video of the IC99 uh, FPGA project I have been working on for the past maybe six months or so. So uh, it's been a kind of an on and off project, pro progressing quite slowly. But anyway, so uh, I think I'm sort of finally reached the status that's worth showing. So uh, I thought I'd first just run you through the setup that I had been uh, building here. So there's the ULX 3S. FPGA board that I've been lately using as the main development board for the project and um, Yeah, I should have been saying in the beginning that, that the IC99 is a TI-99 for a computer core for FPGA boards and um, On the ULEX 3S um, just to run through quickly the connections here. So with this white wire here is just USB power for the board uh, this one is uh, audio out, um, this HDMI wire is actually just running video out from the board and finally uh, this USB board here is actually going to a uh, USB on the go adapter which is connected to a keyboard and uh, the keyboard in fact is working in um, PS2 mode, it's just using those same wires so it's not actually a USB connect uh, connection even though it occurs through a USB cable. Uh, then. Uh, over here I have a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, uh, which is uh, running uh, sort of a, uh, another project that's, uh, that I haven't been involved in anyway. It's actually the first time that I have been sort of uh, getting this thing to run with the TI-994A, but it's running the, yeah, I don't even know how to pronounce it, <laughs> maybe Thai Pi uh, project, um, basically providing TI with the Pi, uh, you know, and the <laughs> file system support. And uh, usually the way this would work is that this would be connected to a usual, uh, or to the expansion port of a TI-99 4A. In my case, because the TI-99 4A is now going to be emulated here on the FPGA board, uh, I've just um, incorporated uh, the um, connection circuit of the, uh, of the Type I uh, support system uh, into the FPGA design that I have here, and uh, um, these wires are just connecting uh, to the Pi uh, as usual. So normally this would be coming from the expansion bus, uh, and there's an add on board that you would have for the uh, TI 994A. Okay, so um, that is the setup. So let me uh, just then next uh, initialize uh, the uh, FPGA to kind of get this thing going. So I'll just move around the camera a little bit. Um, uh, so what I kind of want to show up here, and I don't know if I can get this to focus, but anyway, so this is, um, let's see, this would be um, a micro Python interface to the ULX 3S board. So if I connect here, um, it'll ask me for a password. Hopefully that can show through. So the password is just a to connect to the um, ESP32 microcontroller that's also on the ULX 3S board. And uh, um, pretty much all of the FPGA cores um, that have been designed that emulate other computers use this uh, overlay system. And there's a, a command that I'm going to run next, which is this import OSD, so uh, overlay uh, screen display. Uh, Python code uh, and um, when I run this it will actually initialize uh, the FPGA so if I just do that and uh, it will load the bitstream and uh, uh, the beep is coming from the TI-99 for a emulation and now uh, the computer or the FPGA core has booted. One of the other functions I have been adding in here uh, is uh, this small uh, LCD display which is showing a portion of the top left hand corner of the T994A display. And now, um, so uh, I'm just, uh, I have this, uh, uh, well, okay, so that is pretty huge on the camera, <laughs> but this is the, uh, the keyboard that I will be using just to operate the, the 994A. And uh, at the moment I find that usually when I uh, sort of uh, reboot the core I have to plug in the PS2 keyboard uh, so to make that operational. And uh, let me move over the camera to the uh, computer, or to the FPGA, FPGA screen there. So uh, uh, if 
if I push here buttons on the PS2 keyboard, things will operate. And uh, uh, yeah, I can I can get the basics. So one of the cool things uh, here is the um, support for this overlay stuff. So uh, if I push F1 on the keyboard, uh, what I get is this uh, overlay. And uh, in here, so the yeah the core is still passing the key presses to the um, to the TI when I'm actually moving around uh, in this um, um, menu. And um, so I select the SD folder, I go to the TI-994A, and maybe for starters I'll just load uh, some game here. So let's pick, pick uh, uh, Parsec. So that was the um, cartridge ROM for Parsec. In order to start that I also need to go and get the same GROM, so the Parsec GROM is over there. So now that's loaded, and now if I uh, back off to the main menu and go here, I have Parsec as one of the entries, and, and next I can just go over there, and uh, now Parsec is running. And I should also actually show to you that uh, uh, the uh, the screen over there is, is sort of uh, mirroring this function, so it sort of appears pretty dark <laughs> at the moment, but if I to drive the spaceship, our ship, to the top left-hand corner, you can see that it's appearing there, you know, that small thing uh, in, the, in the screen, so that's mirroring that activity. And going back to the uh, TV screen, we can see um, that, uh, well, not only that my monitor is, <laughs> is, is dusty, but also that uh, the game is running there. And, uh, yeah, I can control it and, uh, and you know, operate as usual. So the, uh, game is running pretty fast since the core is running probably at around four times or something like that of the original TI-99 for a speed. Um, okay, so uh, if I then exit Parsec, so I guess I have to... Well, maybe the fastest way is just to push reset. So I'm back to the uh, FPJ part here, or the main, main menu. And uh, the one thing I also wanted to just quickly show is that uh, uh, I can actually yeah, because the button presses are going, well, that is looking weird, but the button presses are going to the um, uh, TFP, to the uh, TI-99 core. When I navigate the menu, I get this annoying beeping as the, so let me load. So that's what I just loaded was Turbo Fourth. And what I wanted to show here is that I have been adding the support for Atacomus mode. So if I go to, uh, with three to the normal turbo fourth, you get kind of the sort of typical turbo fourth action here. But uh, if I uh, uh, exit from here, and then I would have to remember, so, yeah, it's by it's the command. And if I now re enter with the eight column mode, uh, we get the eight column display. So that's working. Okay, the same word listing command, and uh, we get that output. So that's that's working too. And the, the new thing, which I sort of got to run, at least uh, similarly working today, is the type I interface. So uh, uh, if I go back back over, over here and just uh, power on Pi and uh, give it the need also to boot. And uh, while that's operating, I will again exit from here. And uh, uh, what I need to do is to enter basic. And now I, I am going to load uh, the driver. Uh, so the, basically the DS at the device driver for the uh, type I, however you're supposed to pronounce that. And uh, that is now done. And uh, I suppose that the, that the Pi has also had, some, had a moment to boot. And uh, if I now then just simply run here the initialization command, which is call type i, then, uh, yeah, it does boot up. So what this means then is that uh, the 994A core running on the FPGA board is actually able to communicate properly with the, um, um, with the Pi. So uh, what I don't know yet uh, I have to learn, is, is how to actually operate this, but uh, it will provide me uh, with this support. And uh, again, I, I think it's kind of nice that there's this small display. Um, let me just try to get a close up here. So uh, you can see that uh, the, um, well, 
I don't know how well this comes across um, the video, but basically we can see the top left hand corner of the screen there. Yeah, so uh, I, I guess that that's it for now. So um, I hope you enjoy uh, this small update on, on the project.